So we ended the last video with the concept of isotopes. Isotopes are atoms of the same element, but they've got different numbers of neutrons. So as an example, we looked at hydrogen as an isotope. One, one hydrogen, one, two, which is called deuterium. Hydrogen, one, three, which is called tritium. You've also got something called carbon, and you get carbon, six, twelve, carbon, six, thirteen, and carbon, six, fourteen. There are very small percentages of those ones. There's lots of that. There's very small percentages of those ones. There's lots of that. What that results in is that when you average 1, 2, and 3 in the perfect ratios, you get a number that is not a whole number. That is the mass number on the periodic table. So when y is, not my i, y is the relative atomic mass of carbon, not exactly 12 on an accurate periodic table, and that is because there are also isotopes of carbon of 13 and 14 that need to be taken into account of the average mass of all the particles, of all the carbon atoms on Earth. So it is an average mass including 13 and 14. What's also important to realize is that the way they work out one atomic mass unit is they take carbon 12 divided by 12 and they get one atomic mass unit. So every single other element is compared to carbon 12. Um, and that is because hydrogen is a gas, so it's difficult to work with. Helium is a gas, it's difficult to work with. Lithium reacts with water and with oxygen, it's difficult to work with. Boron is also fairly reactive. Um, and beryllium is also not abundant, and it is reactive, so that isn't convenient. So the first convenient and small element and abundant element on the periodic table is carbon, so that's why they use it as the yardstick against which to measure anything else. So you can kind of think of it as an atomic one kilogram mass piece kind of thing, but it's not a one kilogram, it's one atomic mass unit. And it's when you take carbon-12 and chop it into 12 pieces that you land up getting, a um, one atomic mass unit, 12 even pieces. Anyway, so when they ask you why is the relative atomic mass of carbon not exactly 12, or why is the relative atomic mass of hydrogen not exactly 1 on the periodic table, it is because there are other isotopes that need to be accounted for in the mass number on the periodic table. Even though they're in small ratios, they do need to be accounted for. Let's take an element such as chlorine. Now, chlorine is made up of 75% chlorine-35 and only 25% of chlorine-37. How many protons and neutrons do each isotope contain? Well, they've both got 17 protons. Chlorine has then got 18 neutrons. That is 35 minus 17. Whilst chlorine-37 has got 37 minus 17, so it's 20 neutrons. Then it says, determine, and watch this method carefully, the average relative atomic mass of chlorine. So watch what I'm going to do. First thing we do is we say, 75% of 35 plus 25% of 37. How do I calculate that? 0, 0,75 times 35, 0, 0,25 times 37, and we add those two numbers together. You get 26,25, and you get... 9,25, and when you add those together, you land up with 35,5. So that would be the average relative atomic mass, which is what you would find on the periodic table, for chlorine. You need to be able to do these calculations. There will be more examples in your quizzes. Here is a video that goes through what we have done over the last two videos. It's almost like a little bit of a summary. Electrons are far lighter, 
with a mass of about one two thousandth of a proton or neutron. These measurements are made in atomic mass units. That is on a scale where the most common type of carbon atom is given a mass of 12. Overall, individual atoms are electric neutral. But within an atom, protons have a positive charge of 1, and electrons have a negative charge, that is a charge of minus 1. Because there are the same number of protons and electrons, the charges cancel out. Neutrons have had no charge at all. The diagram used here shows the four protons and four electrons. Let's identify that atom inside the periodic table. It's beryllium. We will write the symbol of structure of beryllium like this. The number four is the proton number, and the number nine is the nucleon number. That is the number of atoms in the nucleus. Beryllium therefore has four protons and an equal number that is four electrons. The number of neutrons is the nucleon number. Minus the number of protons in the nucleus, so it's 9 minus 4, which is 5 minus 5 neutrons. Suppose we can add a version of the ruling with a nuclear number of 8. It can still have 4 protons and 4 electrons, but by now 8 minus 4, which is 4 neutrons. These two versions of the same element are all isotopes. All elements have isotopes and some of them for many. many. Isotopes of an element must also have the same number of protons but they have a different number of neutrons. This has absolutely no effect on its chemical properties. Here are three known isotopes of carbon. Carbon 12 is stable, but the most common isotope. Carbon 13 is stable, but has only one neutron. Carbon 14 is unstable, it's radioactive, and has two neutrons in carbon 12, which is the most common. Supporting notes in this video are available on the website.